This is a Rickenbacker Sunburst guitar. It's a bass guitar and if you want to paint one, you'll be able to find lots of reference on the internet. I thought it's a great subject because you've got lovely smooth and colourful washes but you've also got some very precise painting and lots of negative painting to do the strings and frets and so forth. I am informed by my husband, who is a bass guitarist, that this is one of the best in the world and I thought it was a pretty colour, so there you go. So I'm starting on the body of the guitar and do excuse me if I get all the terminology wrong because I am not a guitarist. I have got a £140 not or cold press watercolour paper and I sketched the guitar out. Do observe carefully because the shape is really odd. I've started with the body using washes of burnt sienna, a little bit of alizarin. I've got some Aussie red gold which is a Daniel Smith's colour which I've been meaning to use for ages so this was a good excuse to get that real sort of uh, sunset colours. Because my studio is very warm at the moment, I wet the background and then put the colours in to avoid hard edges. Here I'm starting to paint negatively. I'm not going to paint the strings in as such. I'm going to paint the spaces behind the strings. And I think that just gives a really interesting effect. So I'm carrying on on the body, making sure there's always a wet edge to avoid that hard line. So it's just important to be aware of what is drying and what it isn't. And if needs be, pre-wet your paper and then put the colour in if things are drying too quickly. If on the other hand it's quite cold, you could just paint wet paint onto dry paper. Now this painting took about 40 minutes in total. If I was taking more care and doing a longer painting, I would let the, the background dry and then probably do a second layer to deepen the colour and to even things up. But I wanted it to be a fairly quick study, so I'm not. I'm going back now to really work on the, on those frets and you can see here that I'm observing very carefully from my photo where the spaces are, but I'm doing single strokes in between using the point of my brush to leave the, the frets and the strings as negative shapes, unpainted shapes. So you really need to concentrate so that you don't get lost. This is a bit closer. And I don't think there's any problem with all those squares and rectangles being slightly different colours. In fact, I think it's positive that they are. So at the end, you'll see me dot in a few colours into the still wet areas. Should things go a little awry and some of the white space get lost, I wouldn't panic because our eyes join the dots and we will still see that the strings are there. So I'm just carrying on, working through. Look, here I am just dropping a little bit of colour to sort of liven things up. And once I'm happy with the pattern I've achieved, I'll be able to, to let it dry and just decide whether I need to sort of sharpen things. I'm now using a grey mix uh, to start working on all the, the silver bits. Again, I'm sure there's some technical terms for this, but I'm just observing the lights and the darks. Again, here I'm actually painting negatively because the strings carry on. The little screws and things I put in positively. I'm putting in some of the lights and darks of the shine. This is called a pick guard, I think, but it's a matter of really painting in the pattern. Look at your photo, simplify it a little and paint in the patterns. Again, if you're taking more time, you could be a lot more accurate with your reflections, but I didn't want to, to do that. Here I'm putting in the dark, so I'm going to let them dry a little and then I'll use a damp brush to, to pull some of that colour out and I'll get the mid-tones. I know traditionally we paint 
light to dark in watercolour but sometimes it's easier to get some of those darks in really early on and then add in mid-tones and come towards the light. It does depend on, on how you feel and, and your subject of course. So you can see here the wet brush is just putting in some mid-tones and I'm looking at the patterns and adding in just enough detail. Again, you could do this far more precisely should you wish to, but here I'm trying to get the, the essence of this guitar. I used a pre-mixed grey for this, just called a transparent grey, because it's nice and soft and very neutral. Given that I've put all that burnt sienna in the background, I could have mixed burnt sienna with some French ultramarine to get a really good, interesting grey. And probably, if I did this again, then I would do that. Just pre-mixed colours can just be a bit bland and boring. Whereas if you mix your own grey, sometimes it'll veer towards the blue, sometimes veer towards the orange, and will just be a lot more interesting on the paper. So you can see I'm adding in more reflections and putting in mid-tones. I'm trying to make this look a little bit metallic and shiny. And now I'm putting in all oh, these clever knob things. I don't know what they all do. I guess something is for volume and bass. And, oh, I don't know. I could ask my husband, but he'd go off on one for half an hour and I'd have to pretend I was interested. <laughs> Poor man. Anyway, the knobs are just nice and simple. I'm drawing them freehand because I don't want it super precise, but I do want to, to get these little screws in and I think they're quite fun to add uh, a bit more to that sort of plate. I'm adding in little bits of detail here and now there's uh, the label, which is a sort of stylized US flag. So uh, I just grabbed a tiny bit of cadmium red and french ultramarine to put that in again it doesn't have to be precise it's just to give the idea of it having done most of the strings as negative painting i do need to put in a tiny bit of positive where it crosses the white so i've done that and now it's a case of sharpening things up without getting too fiddly just add in a few more mid-tones, a few more darks, a few sharper edges, maybe a little bit of shadow, um, a bit of shadow where the plate is, a bit of shadow from some of the strings. It's these tiny end details that can make or break. It can give a little bit more punch, or if you overdo it, it can make it all look too fiddly and precise. So I'm using a weak mixture of the grey and just putting a bit of shadow in here. You can see now on the, on the neck I'm putting in a shadow of the strings. I've put those little knob things that keep the strap on. I, I guess they're terribly important. Uh, little details like that just shows that you've really observed and seen what's going on. I thought the white plate was a bit too white so I've added a little bit of that French ultramarine just in a few places and then lift it off, off with kitchen towel just to leave the very oh shadow of a colour to add some interest and then I thought I'd drop in a little bit of the the ready blue and, and blue colours into some of the metal areas so it looked like the colours were being reflected off them so I'm trying not to fiddle and it's just tiny little touches at this point. Say, if I'd got more time, I'd have really liked to sort out that, that background just to get the, the body a little smoother. I think I've got away with it, but that yellow sort of splodge to the left is a little bit annoying, but I'll live with it at this point. Now it's always worth making sure you know what is wet and what is dry just to make sure you don't smudge any work because I'm not intending to put a background on this and I had got a few marks but I used a damp magic eraser to get those out of the background and to make sure that was nice and clean. So it is worth hair drying between layers 
to ensure that you don't sort of drag your hand through it at all. So when it's dry, just use an eraser to take out any pencil marks and clean things up. That does make a huge difference. And there's our bass guitar. You could take this approach with many, many different instruments.